Hello, oh, this is William Hemphill with the Faith and Family Matters podcast. I am a minister and a pastoral therapist who works a lot with couples in building and strengthening relationships. I wanted to take the time to talk about something different today. And it's something that I've noticed, uh, not just in my couple's work, but I think it's going all over society. And the question that I have for us is, are we doing violence with our words? Are we doing violence with our words? Now, I initially began to think about this because in the U.S., of course, this past weekend, looks like there was an assassination attempt on one of the presidential candidates. And... You know, we pray that things will be safe and people have better reactions. We pray for both our candidates. And one of the things I like to always say is we can disagree politically, but we shouldn't be doing violence with each other, especially physically. But even as I thought about the physical violence, I started thinking more about how we do violence with our words as human beings. Now, I know several of us have probably been following the elections and depending on what side you're on or whatever else, you can see where at times statements have been made that sound like they could be harmful to somebody else, if that makes sense. You know, talking about that one candidate or the other will bring the end of the world insulting a candidate, calling them by names, making implied statements. I think I heard one of the political organizations making an implied statement about if you don't go with our program, it will be peaceful unless you follow our program. And so it's just stuff like this that we say with our words that can be violent. Now, Thinking about that, I also know in couples work and in our relationships in general, that we often do harm or violence with mm -hmm. our words. As a matter of fact, if we look scripturally at James chapter three, I believe it is verse eight and nine, it says, no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we also curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. In other words, we often do violence with our words or our tongues, and I would like to examine why do we do that? A lot of times when I do work with couples, I do work to help people understand their triggers and buttons. Some of our triggers might be abandonment. That's a big trigger. Controlled, disrespected, feeling like you're being treated unfairly, not a priority. I could probably name some other triggers, but what happens in couples' relationships is usually a couple gets into a discussion, one of those triggers is hit, and then a reaction occurs that leads to conflict. That reaction might be yelling, it might be shutting down, it might be getting defensive, complaining, or that reaction might be internal. You start mind reading based on what you think your spouse is going to say, so on and so forth. Or it could be throwing insults at people. When we throw insults at people, that's a reaction. That's doing violence with our words. Not respecting the other person we're talking to as someone who is made in the image of God Almighty. And this happens a lot in couples. But as I look through society and especially look at our political situation, I see that it's happening 
a lot here also. And I'm just going to share my personal opinion. I think the violence that we have been doing with, to each other with our words, political candidates included, led to the events on Saturday in which former President Trump almost got assassinated. Shots were fired at him. Actual shots. Another way of looking at it is our thinking often influences how we react, but also the emotional pain in our hearts often influences how we react. As a therapist and a minister, I say this. Usually when I see someone reacting, I'm wondering, what is the pain going on in their heart? What are they fearful of? Because when we are not dealing with fear in our hearts or triggers in our hearts, we usually treat people with respect. I hope that makes sense to you. I was just trying to connect both of the worlds I deal with, even in looking at this political situation. Here's the charge, I think, for us as people. I say us as people, first of all, because I'll be honest, I can't control political candidates. How do we use our words to heal? instead of bringing harm? How can we use our words to heal instead of bringing harm? Can we actually have political discussions where we still respect each other as human beings created in the image of God Almighty? Can we treat each other well and have compassion for one another no matter where we sit on the spectrum of classification in our society, whether we're rich or poor or Democrat or Republican or independent or certain cultures, races, genders, whatever it may be, can we treat each other with respect and find ways to bring healing with our words instead of harm? I actually believe this. The power is in our hands as a community. If we demand that people treat each other with respect, our politicians, our leaders, <laughs> and put your votes behind it, it'll make a difference because they'll start saying, hey, maybe I need to treat my opponents or my colleagues with more respect. But regardless of what they do, we can choose to monitor our reactions and notice that if we start speaking words that are harmful, that we can back away, take a break, examine our hearts, get some healing for our hearts so that we can come back, apologize for offensive things that we may have said, try to walk differently, and then bring words that heal instead of words that, that hurt. Instead of doing violence with our words, that we could do love and hope and grace and compassion and forgiveness and advo advocating for those, for people who might be less fortunate than us in any type of way so that we can live in a better country and a better place. So those are just some thoughts that I had as I looked at this situation. I know it's not the typical mental health couples therapy speech, but I still think it's very important that we first of all learn to monitor our hearts, to deal with the pain in our hearts, so that we can look at other people with respect, with dignity and love, 
and that we choose to use our words in ways that are healing instead of ways that are violent and harmful. This is William Hemphill with the Faith and Family Matters podcast. Thanking you for joining us today. I hope this blesses you. Our charge, find words that heal. Show gratefulness, grace, and love and respect to everybody that we encounter, especially those who may be different from us. Take care. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.